When you see the Union Jack fluttering in the breeze, what do you feel? Pangs of pride and patriotism? For thousands of years, flags have represented a people's hopes and dreams. We wave them, burn them, march under their colours and still, in the 21st century, die for them. But what do they truly represent? Tim Marshall, former diplomatic editor at Sky, has a new book out, Worth Dying For, The Power and Politics of Flags. He'll join us in just a moment. First, though, take a look at this. Pictures there of Trooping the Colour and Tim Marshall, author of Worth Dying for the Power and Politics of Flags, is here. Welcome to The Daily Politics. So the Union Jack, let's start with that. Mm -hmm. I think we'll have a picture, in case anyone doesn't know what it looks like. One of the most famous flags in the world. What's the story behind it? It is the story of our union. It is the story of our great myths, the, the, the legend uh, uh, of St uh, George, the legend of St Andrew, King Angus in Scotland, for example. Uh, they were very big on St Andrew. Just before his battle, he looked up at the sky, and there in the blue sky was this great white cross. Hence the salt here. Add that to ours, mm. add a bit of uh, other things on. Unfortunately, don't put a dragon in, which is problematic, I find, with our flag. <laughs> uh, and, and then after 1707 and the Act of Union... Here we are. Uh, but what you really see in it, Joe, is down to you. you know, it is in the eye of the beholder because, you know, I, I think it's quite a good flag. It's um, certainly one of the best known in the world for various it's endured. reasons. But there will be one or two people who look at it, and there's a nickname for it in certain quarters, the butcher's apron. Mm. Because if, you, if you're that particular beholder and you look at that particular flag, it means something very different to a different person looking at well, it. Well, let's uh, talk about symbolism. Why are they so symbolic for many, yeah, many yeah. people, whether it's on porches in the States or waved at you know, various events during the year to denote patriotism mm -hmm. or burnt or whatever it is? They are very important in people's minds. Because it's the embodiment of ideas. It, it is symbolic of what something you, you want it to be. I'm trying to think of an example. I mean, there are so many examples. The Ethiopian flag is a good example. Red, gold and green. Mm. The only African country not to be fully colonised was such an inspiration to the rest of Africa that when the African countries began to become independent mm. themselves, they, many of them took inspiration. Red, gold and green. Now, these are just colours, but what they mean to people that look at them in Africa is freedom, is independence, is standing up against the outside oppressor. How old or how recent are flags? Oh, uh, yes, I'll, you'll get letters, so will I. <laughs> um, I get them all the time, yeah. so they'll just add and pile up. It depends on your definition of a flag. Let's call it an emblem. Uh, 20,000 years ago, I'm sure somebody stuck a skull mm. on top of a post and carried it in front of them. Is that a flag? Maybe not. Fast forward and we've got cloth. But if you try putting uh, paint onto cloth, it's pretty heavy, and then let it rain, and you're going to be falling backwards off your horse into battle. So silk. The Chinese invented silk. And so about 3,000 years ago, at that point, you can start colouring your silk, you can start flying it into battle. Take that along the Silk Road, and you meet the Arabs. The Arabs then start to have their own flags. The Crusades, we then have this unfortunate collision between the two, but a lot of the Europeans thought, that's a good idea. From that becomes the European flags, from there comes heraldry, and out of the heraldry comes the national flags we see today. All right, well, let's have a look at the Chinese flag, since you mentioned uh, uh, the Chinese. Yep. What does it say? It says communism, <laughs> with Chinese characteristics, which is actually capitalism now. And in the flag again, do you have time to put it up again? Yes. Red says communism. There it is. The big star is the Communist Party, the CP itself, mm. and it dominates the flag. Now, behind it is, are the four categories of, 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 of the Chinese. There's the peasants, the proletariat, there's the uh, bourgeoisie, and then very cunningly, there's the uh, patriotic capitalists. Well, that was very far-sighted of the communists. It was. The but it's because, taken them a bit of time you know, to get now, them. Now the last one dominates the other three, but dominating them all is the party, and that's what the flag says. Do you have a favourite flag? 
Uh, I think the Union Jack is my favourite. <laughs> other, other than the Union Jack. I mean, is it something you're interested in? It's not something I'm interested in. It is something I'm moved by, and I think really for the reasons that Tim says. Yeah. It's, and I think also it's sort of above the fray, isn't it? It's outside politics. It's like the Queen. It's is something. It? Yes, it's something I think we can all unify around rather than being divided in various ways. We're supposed to unify around, but it can be divisive. Can what? be. I don't think right, the Union Jack Union is divisive. Are you, are, you, are you sorry to take over your studio? No, go ahead. <laughs> are you uniting around the EU flag? No, no, sorry, I meant the Union Jack. Because that's a country and we're part of it. And but I we're think also part of the European almost, Union. Yeah, but almost all of us, whatever we feel about the European Union, actually feel part of Britain. I think. Now, I accept that if you are in Scotland and you are in favour of independence, you might take a different view. But all those of us who believe in the Union believe in that flag because it's outside all the disputes we have about everything else. What about the difference in style, though, in imagery? You talked about Africa following Ethiopia. The imagery of European-style flags mm. and flags from the Arab nations, for example. I mean, is there a big difference in what they're trying to say? Yes. Um, again, I mean, th this is blindingly obvious, but it's sometimes worth pointing that out. Obviously, the Christians, Christian symbolism fades. I mean, you've got the Scandinavian cross up in the north. The Portuguese flag has the five stigmata of uh, Jesus on it. The Greek flag has the cross. And, of course, that starts to fade as you head into the east. And what happens then? Two things happen. One is the Arab colours of revolt. We've got the Saudi flag, actually. Right. The Saudi flag uh, with the shahada, the profession of, of, of faith on it, I mean, that is so obviously not... European. Mm. But the, the Arab flags of revolt were the great three Islamic dynasties. Uh, so you had all three of them represented on the Arab flag of revolt, the red, the green and the black, to bring them together, both the Shia and the Sunni dynasties that could come together to be pan-Arabic. And that's why so many of their flags uh, are, are those colours. The Saudis decided that they were different and they were the true hold, the holders of the faith. Interestingly, along come ISIS. Mm, I think we've got yeah. the ISIS now, flag ISIS too. ISIS are not going to have green because that is associated not only with Islam, um, but sometimes with the Shia. And look at the difference between the Saudi flag with its calligraphy and its beautiful, clean colours. It's gold, yes. Yeah. And that really ragged, old-fashioned, brutal flag. A, it's square because Muhammad's flag was supposed to be... And they want to go square. back to a, a much more that's, primitive... That's the real point, Joe. Look at the writing and compare it to the calligraphy of the Saudi flag and that says 6th century. That says we're rough and ready, we're the original Islam, we're the true Sunni Islam. And the, the white there, you see, that is the stamp of Muhammad. That's very similar to uh, some of the letters that have been put into the Tupakaki uh, Museum in, in Istanbul. So that whole flag screams, we are the authentic voice of Islam in opposition to the others. And that's the politics uh, of flags. And that's presumably why you've written the book. You're fascinated by it, aren't you? It's a you? vehicle. I like talking about <laughs> current affairs. Thanks very much Thank for you, coming Joe. in.